in our introductory video to Comet Siding Spring, we saw what it would be like to stand on the comet during close approach to Mars. We saw what it would be like to look from different places on the red planet as the comet went by, including some expected spectacular daylight visibility. Our rover and spacecraft nearby should get some terrific views. Well, how about a look from Phobos, the moon of Mars? First of all, the view of Mars is spectacular from there, but only portions of Phobos ever see Mars. Both Phobos and Deimos are tidally locked. When the close approach happens, the comet will whiz by quickly, and the show from Phobos will be as good as any. If you're looking for a more aesthetically appealing version of the orbital diagram for siding spring, looking to take a step back, and you want something better looking than the one you get from the Jet Propulsion Lab, this comes to us from the makers of Solar System Scope. A link to this diagram will be provided to you below the video. And while we let her run, let me describe to you the worst possible scenario for this comet. Now let me be clear. The chances of a worst case scenario are very, very small, especially since the comet is expected to miss Mars. But if somehow humans aren't perfect and the comet manages to hit, the potential for debris to come to Earth is very real. Not in a day or a week or a month, much longer than that. Earth will be moving away from Mars in its orbit as the comet makes its close approach, so it would be nearly three quarters of a year until we got to that part of the solar system. Now I can just hear it now. We heard the same thing about Comet Ison, didn't we? And nothing happened. Well, Ison was supposed to come much closer to the Sun than to Mars, and despite the efforts of this channel to dispel the doomy videos and fear-mongering, the Internet simply cried wolf. Despite the fact that Siding Spring will likely fly by harmlessly, Ison passed 6.5 million miles away from Mars. Siding Spring will be about 100 times closer. 100 times. And that's near the further end of the experts' predictions. What you're seeing here is from Xavier Thunders, portraying a circumstance that could produce debris in the inner system, even without an impact. As you saw from the comet's trajectory, a simple fracturing of the comet wouldn't do it, wouldn't put us in danger. Its orbit is such that the pieces would simply continue up and out of the system. But given NASA's latest look into the electrical nature of asteroids and comets, and given the tendency for the observers to take an electrical interactive approach to these things, along with the experts' claim that the coma of the comet will interact with Mars, static electricity tends to suggest we could have a discharge event. This is, of course, entirely predicated on that last fact being true, on the guesses of the experts, that this thing will come as close as they say, and that its coma will interact with the atmosphere of Mars. And if that's the case, we may not need a collision. It's just that simple. Will we be watching? You bet. Would I expect any fireworks if I were you? No, not really. However, if the discharge event occurs, bits of Mars or the comet itself could be left behind, redirected, and then we've got a very different future on our hands. But like I said, don't expect a biblical light show. This is the best chance for this type of event in the lifetimes of anybody who could be listening to this video. Chances are, this won't happen again. We won't get another chance like this. Not for a very very long time.